Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coco and Dalts. We're real people giving you real reviews of all the latest movies and TV shows that are streaming on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney+. Plus. We also sometimes review books and music, so we are your one-stop pop culture shop if you want to know what to spend your time on because we all got a lot of time on our hands lately so. oh yeah we do so we do so i'm not Daltz. and i'm not coco just in case you thought that i wasn't in this episode i actually am here i am oh i'm sorry do you want to start over again did i talk no. too much no not not at all i didn't have anything to add you were just so amazing in the intro there that i just i just sat back and admired and and studied see this is why i think that you're insincere when you pay me compliments because that was clearly insincere i think we should have a vote from our listener and see if they thought that that was insincere well we're going to move on because people are probably uncomfortable listening to us so uh (laughs) so today the marks of a good podcast (laughs) so today on the podcast we are reviewing white lines a limited series that dropped on netflix about 10 days ago or so. so. I have the deets on that. Daltz does. Take it away, Daltz. So this series, White Lines, debuted on Netflix as a Netflix original on May 15th, 2020. And it is the story. It's a 10-episode story uh, created and written by Alex Pina, who is a j- former journalist, as a matter of fact, oh. from Madrid. Um, he, this did, is, he did Money Heist, he did which Money is Heist. apparently the most popular non-English language series on Netflix. See, now I got a crack research team folder in front of me and I don't have that. So I'm glad that you added that. And you have no notes in front of you because your mind is a steel trap. Once again, insincerity. Um, So the series is based on uh, uh, a DJ who, a young DJ who goes from Manchester, England, not to be confused with Manchester, Connecticut. Or Manchester, New Hampshire. Right. Yeah. Yeah, A lot of DJs probably in those (laughs) It's not a DJ culture. Let's just put it that way. Especially in the 90s. Especially in the 90s. He goes from the 90s to Ibiza, which is this crazy island off the coast of Spain that has no rules and DJs galore. And it's known for its nightclubs. So when you Google Ibiza, (laughs) what comes up is uh, island renowned for nightlife. Oh, okay. So uh, it's one of those places. So the DJ goes to Ibiza. He disappears. 20 years later, his body is discovered. His sister, whom he is very close to, decides she's going to take it upon herself to find out who killed her brother. Because in Spain, apparently, there is a statute of limitations on murder of 20 years. And the Spanish cops said they would not investigate the death because nobody could be brought to justice for it because the statute of limitations had expired a couple of years earlier. So I don't want to be culturally insensitive, but WTH, Spain. <laughs> well, like a murder is a murder. Well, hopefully because Alex Pena is from Madrid, that is actually based in fact and not just oh, something yeah, fantastical, oh, yeah. you know, for yeah. the show. It was purposes. Yeah. Pena being a journalist, he got it down. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, 10 episodes, so we, we see Zoe, who is played by Laura Walker, uh, go to... Uh, I think Walker was her character's last name. I think it's Laura Haddon. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Or Haddock, something you're right, like that. You're right, you're right, you're right. So right. she, Zoe, goes to Ibiza to investigate the murder. She goes originally with her husband and... Much hijinks ensue <laughs> involving other men and such like. And so it's just essentially this, it's a murder mystery wrapped in sex, drugs, rock and roll. And the rock and roll being sort of like DJ culture and, mm-hmm. and house music and that sort of thing from the 90s. And it's just, well, I, I want to know what your take is, Coco, before, because we have not rehearsed this, as you might be able to tell, listener. Um, and we don't know uh, what each other's opinions are. So, Coco, what do you think? It, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Like my bar for entertainment is very low because I just want something to keep my attention. And I'm not trying to say that this wasn't like done well or whatever. It's just, I, it, basically it was a soap opera mm-hmm. because you've got the murder mystery, you've got the drugs, you've got the clubs, you've got like the two rival warring families vying for Wait control. What soap opera of- are you watching? <laughs> Like, is this like, as the world turns? Like I don't, every soap opera ever. Like, with the drugs and the... Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes And you, the mafia? And, yeah, you know, so you've got like the rival families, you know, who end up reigniting this feud that had been long dormant. You've got the friends who Axel the DJ went to Ibiza with who are still in Ibiza. Mm-hmm. And 
they're still there and everybody's kind of sleeping with everybody else. And so <laughs> like at heart, it's just a soap opera. So I, wow. I should have watched more soap operas when I was a kid, I guess. <laughs> so I, on the one hand, I think like if they could have played it up and made it like a little campier, mm-hmm. it might have been a little more fun and a little more heart- lighthearted, but at the same time wrapped up in this soap opera wrapping paper is all these really heavy themes right. of like overcoming the trauma of your past right. and also finding out who murdered somebody. Well, and, and becoming somebody that you didn't want to become. Right. And like everybody's having a midlife crisis. Yeah. Like all the yeah. British people are having midlife crises. And it, it, and then there's like this weird Oedipus <laughs> complex storyline yeah. that didn't land for me at all. It didn't need to be there. Yeah, it didn't need to be there. Like that character actually ended up in the very last episode, they made him gay. And I'm like, that would actually explain a whole lot of what he did in the previous nine episodes if they just would have made him closeted and shown his struggle with right, that right. throughout the series instead of giving him this weird, you know, I want to have sex with my mom storyline. Well, and plus, it's a visa. Like, how how closeted do you need to be in a place like that? It's right. Europe. I right. mean, it's Spain. So mm-hmm. would that even be much of an issue, I guess? Right. So so it had like these competing impulses. Like it yeah. wanted to be like this point. fun, frothy, you know, let's show the beaches and let's show the nightlife and all these like hard-bodied people who are having orgies all over the place. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's like everybody's having a midlife crisis and they're trying to overcome some kind of trauma from their past. So it was... It was a weird, like, yin and yang. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. It had a real existential sort yeah. of a questioning to it. There was mm-hmm. there were a lot of, what am I doing here? And why, where am I going? And, right. And the midlife crises is exactly right. So, the, so Zoe goes there and she's having trouble. It doesn't seem like she's having trouble with her marriage, but this sort of breaks her marriage, not to mm-hmm. be all spoilery or anything like that. Um, well, you did say there were hijinks with other men and some such. <laughs> well, that so, doesn't necessarily yeah. break a marriage up. Sometimes, <laughs> well, that, that's true. Sometimes that, it does. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. But um, there are a lot of uh, deeper issues, like you said, there mommy issues and uh, responsibility as an adult issues, and there were a mm-hmm. lot of things there. The, the impression I got after the first couple of episodes, and it stuck with me, was this felt like a Guy Ritchie kind of knockoff. Oh yeah. So you've got like a little bit of snatch in there. You've got a little bit mm-hmm. of lock, stock, and smoking barrels. Yeah. I think was his uh-huh. other one that was around that same time. So it had that. It wasn't as campy as that, and the characters weren't as extreme as those productions, but they were in that vein. So it was kind of like a, that was the British vibe. So to yeah. me, like you had uh, the British vibe going through, and then you had the Spanish vibe. It was a collaboration between British and Spain, obviously, production companies. Um, the, Brit- the British side being from the Crown, the people who did the Crown oh, okay. were involved with this. Uh-huh. So there is the British element to it, and it's, it's very um, visually stunning, and yeah. some of the this is actually a very good contrast to what the shows that we've been watching previously. So right. we were watching uh, Border we were, Town. Border Town. We were watching about Holler Murders. These were all like very mono, monochromatic, and they were like grays and mm-hmm. dark blues and all that sort of stuff. Right. Where and and filtered too. There were a lot of filters on those on those shots of those colors. This to me was like through a yellow filter almost. It was like yeah. a yellowy brown filter. Everything was shiny. Everything like was sun drenched. And as, you, as yeah. you would expect, because you're in Ibiza, you're in right. this beautiful Mediterranean island with beaches and and lovely uh, women and men mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it was very it was very bright. But in this case, it was in stark contrast to the characters because the characters were all very dark. Yeah, they were like the the atmosphere and and this landscape and everything like that was all bright and yellow. Like I said, and the mm-hmm. clothing was all bright as you would expect for a uh, this kind of a destination. But the characters, like the Zoe, had some depression issues because she, you know, when her brother disappeared, she spiraled down and and it it broke her in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You've got um, Boxer, who we haven't talked about yet, who was fantastic. Uh, Nuno Lopes, a uh, Portuguese actor. He's a very, he's got a great smile. He's a very charming guy, mm-hmm. but he is a dark dude. Like, yeah. he's a killer dude. He's the fixer in this, for this mafia family. I think it says a lot about him as an actor that he was able to take this very morally dubious character and make him sympathetic. He he was my favorite character yeah. in this entire thing. And I for could real? tell just by when he showed up on scenes that you liked him too um because you I would mean, sit up at the end of your seat and you would and you would <laughs> and you would like put your hands to your face and, and i would put my phone down and right be like oh all right hottie's well, on the screen now. Time back. Back. 
How you doing, boxer? I read a tweet that said that boxer is the guy you want to meet when you go on holiday, but Axel is the guy you actually meet when oh. you go on holiday. And I was like, nailed it. Yep, nailed it. And totally. Daniel Mays is Marcus, is one of the fr- friends of uh, of the brother who stays there. He's also a DJ. He stayed on uh, on Ibiza. I thought he was really good. He, but he was also a very dark guy. Mm-hmm. He was. Uh, he had the drug connections that sort of propelled a lot of the story in the beginning. Right. Um, and Tom Reese Harris, who plays uh, Axel, the the brother in question, the DJ who disappears, he was he was to me he was a uh, he looked a lot like a male Emma Stone. He had that. Oh yeah. He had I that sort that. of demeanor, the yeah. wide eyes and and the wide uh-huh. face, and like in an attractive way. I'm not I'm not disparaging. And he had so he had a very open, welcoming, blonde spirit. But he was a dark, dark dude. Like he had some serious things going on. And so there are a lot of a lot of contrasts here that I was really interested in, and it was really creatively done. The writing was very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've talked a lot about it. What what are your impressions, maybe, of the characters that I've just discussed? Yeah, that was one of the things. The I'm not saying that everybody has to be like shiny, happy people, and right. I have to like everybody. Right. But a lot of the characters, as the series went on, were pretty unlikable yeah. and unsympathetic. Yeah. I think the only two people who were really kind of above the fray in terms of they didn't do anything quote unquote wrong are Kika who um, was Axel's like teenage girlfriend and David who was one of the friends who went to Ibiza and he ended up like being a spiritual guru (laughs) 20 years later right like those two were like the most like I hate to put it in these terms because this isn't exactly what I mean but like morally pure right of all the characters and I know that everybody's got like nobody's perfect I get that but like Zoe, I understand where she's coming from because she does, like her mom died when she was young and then her brother, she thought, abandoned her. She's got all these issues. She's got, you know, depression and anxiety. She never had a good uh, relationship with her dad. Right. Her dad was neglectful at best. And, you know, she got married young and she had a child young and she never left her hometown, which Manchester is not Kirksville, Missouri. But, you know, (laughs) she's never had excitement or adventure. She's always done the same thing. And she goes to Ibiza and I understand she finds out her brother died and she wants to let loose a little bit. But she's just like a hot mess. Right. Like she's that one friend or family member you have. Maybe you're that friend or family member. (laughs) If you don't have one like that. Right. Like everybody, there's always some kind of drama. She's always stirring stuff up. Like Boxer said, today, you know, she's black. Tomorrow she's white. The next day, maybe she's back to black again. I'm like, that's a really good description of her. Because like she ended up being. She was bipolar. Yeah, totally. Like she ended up not kind of being sympathetic and at all. And she's like, the lead character. She's yeah. the protagonist in this. So we're seeing a lot of it through her mm-hmm. eyes. And then Axel was just, he was a complete jerk. I didn't understand all the Christ imagery they used with him because his, I guess for lack of a better term, like DJ logo was basically like the Christ the Redeemer statue holding up. It looked like basketballs, but it was probably like records. It's supposed to be records or CDs, right? yeah. Yeah, and there was all this Christ imagery. And at one point for his birthday party in a flashback, he's standing at the top of this building and he does like the Christ thing with the spread open mm-hmm. arms. And then he like cannonballs into the pool below. And I'm like, this guy is so unchrist like <laughs> Like he's doing drugs. He's, you know, screwing everybody out there. Like he screws he's turning his, on friend. his friends. He's yeah. turning on his friends. Like... Probably the most Christ-like thing he does is he burns money, which actually eventually ends up leading to his death. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. Yep. But like he screws his friend in the process of burning the money and saying he wants to start over and not be dedicated to that sort of hedonistic lifestyle. So I'm like, Axel, like I didn't care who killed him at the end. <laughs> Seriously. I was just like, you know what? A lot of people have motives for killing this guy. And... I don't really care who did it. Like, I'm not saying I think he should have been killed or deserved right, it, but right. I'm just like, yeah, you know, this storyline is not compelling to me. I so. To me, it was more about the, he was the leader and everybody were the followers. Right. And that was the way I interpreted it. And music being, you know, the obvious being the Pied Piper, he was leading mm-hmm. everybody to the promised land because Ibiza was this, was this fantasy place. This was escape. And, and this is where Europeans go. I mean, Ibiza, I don't know if we talked a lot about it, but Ibiza is essentially... This party island where mm-hmm. uh, there are a lot of clubs and, and nightclubs, like I mentioned earlier, but it's where the summer outposts of a lot of European clubs have. So when it gets dodgy in the summer, uh, people go down to Ibiza and and party. So it's it's very much like a your the flock is following you down to Ibiza, mm-hmm. so leading to the promised land and all that sort of thing. I think that 
the yeah, fame and fortune is like another part of it is like we we have this worship culture of mm-hmm. of celebrities and he represented that he was this this god of the music and mm-hmm. was bringing everybody this fun time so i think that was part of it too yeah. but yeah like the it, it was it was a little bit overwrought but it might have been that might have been part of the the Spanish aspect to make him a little bit more controversial. Right. Like, and because religion is bigger, obviously in, in the more Catholic nations. And, you know, I mean, he's a DJ in Ibiza. He's not going home as soon as his set is over and watching Netflix, you know, or whatever <laughs> Netflix was in the nineties. Right, right. When, when this happened. So, he's not going to Blockbuster and renting he, a movie. Right. Totally. So he's not like, you know, speaking of morally dubious, you know, he's not, probably going to be a boy scout anyways if he's <laughs> right. a dj in ibiza to begin with right so yeah so that was uh <laughs> like like i said pretty much like nuno lopez or lopes like nope, yeah. he he played boxer the bouncer at uh, one of the clubs that axel dj'd in back in the day and his character was extremely morally dubious but you you sympathized with him like mm-hmm. you felt like there was like good in him that was trying to come out yes. and in the end he left all that behind like he saw like i don't want to keep doing what i'm doing and he drove away in his car that doesn't have a door on it anymore because <laughs> and it was not a suitable car for him right let's just put it no, that, <laughs> no, it was a, that was a, that was a miscast car <laughs> he's driving a rabbit here's this guy who's like Muscular and dre- and wearing leather and black in every scene. He and should he's got be these on like a Harley on. or something. Yeah, like right? he, and then he jumps in this. <laughs> in it's this like, and it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a brand new Golf. It wasn't like I could sit, I can understand that Volkswagen sponsored this and they put right. a bunch of money into it. And he's or he's driving a Mini or something like that. Right, like it was totally. not that at all. It was just like this random. <laughs> right. Like you said, you said at one point, it's like, why is she driving? Is that that's not his car, is it? Right. Like, totally. It just was. So, it was a stark thing. It was very much a stark thing. But he was fantastic. Like I yeah. would watch. I, as I watched him more and more, I was engaged by him. Mm-hmm. Had the great smile, very welcoming face. He's he's more of a he's a TV and, and movie guy in Portugal and in Spain, and he's actually won uh, many Golden Globes in Portugal. So he's been around for a while. He's forty two years old. Been a, uh, been a great actor over there. But uh, mm-hmm. I would see him in something else. Right. I uh, so I was doing a little bit of googling when we finished up the series, and I don't think it's set that season two is going to happen. But, you know, there's talk because this has been like a hugely popular thing. And one of the interviews I read was with the guy who played Axel. And he was talking about, oh, you know, like we could do a season two on, because there was like a couple of years in the 90s where Axel built up this like club empire in Ibiza. Yeah. Yeah, And we didn't really see any of that. We just see him going from like landing in Ibiza and kind of being scrappy to suddenly he's (laughs) got like a, like a hundred million pesetos that he's burning and he wants to burn it all down literally and figuratively. Like a burning man esque festival. Totally. So like he was like, yeah, you could totally do like a series just on like those four characters in Ibiza for a couple of years building their empire. And I'm like, nah, you know what? I really don't want to see Axel anymore, but like, I would totally watch a season two with Boxer and, and even like Kika, like I would, she was spicy. Like, yeah, Kika was Boxer and Kika. I felt like those were the two best performances in the whole thing. And David too. Like David is probably like, I I felt like David uh, Lawrence Fox who played him. I felt like he really, you could see, especially as the series went on, like, you know, he's the yoga guru and he's all like peace and love and hippie, happy light. But there were like the really dark demons in his past that he had struggled to overcome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the more Zoe went down this road of trying to dredge up the past, like it really brought up the demons in him. And, you know, so I thought I thought those three were the best characters in terms of performances. I was but, thinking but everybody. Nobody did a bad job. It, like, it was really well acted all the way around. Mm-hmm. I, I think if, if anything and if if i'm reaching or if you ask me for a criticism i really wasn't 100% with zoe with laura oh, yeah. as mm-hmm. the uh, zora laura hadden yeah um i i was she was like a uh she she's been in guardians of the galaxy and she's been in some other things that uh you know on the periphery and very much an english actor so not something somebody we'd be really familiar with over here in the mm-hmm. united states um, but she kind of was like a little bit like, uh, she looked like other people and it confused me <laughs> like other actresses. Mm-hmm. And she, I, I didn't buy the torment as much from her. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that she was, 
miscast in some ways because she didn't. She she's so pretty <laughs> that you don't you don't think that somebody could have struggles in their life. You know, it's a, a very very perhaps stereotypical perspective. But yeah. when you're pretty mm-hmm. or you're attractive, man or female, uh, male or female, you tend to have things handed to you a lot of times. And I didn't buy that she was struggling. I, I just didn't buy some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was the only real miss hit. I didn't really. I didn't really buy her extremes either. Like, you know, there's one scene where she's torturing Boxer and with the she's like with power, the power washing washer, <laughs> and it's like this is out of nowhere. Like, I understand that your brother is dead and you're finding out these things, but like, it just. And then there's another scene where she's in the pool with with Kika and they're just relaxing and they're like, it just it was incongruous to me the extremes of her and maybe that was part of the idea was that everyday people lose it too mm-hmm. and especially when put into these circumstances but it was right. it, it felt like a real holiday for her this this whole thing and then every now and then it's like oh yeah I should go and look into my brother's death yeah that was one of the early episodes like maybe episode three or four at the latest the whole episode was about other stuff and then right at the end she was like oh i need to find who killed my brother right, and i'm like right. that's the whole reason why you stayed on the island Reminder. like what do you what do you like okay i guess this you know is going to take a back seat i will say i did like it there were a lot of storylines and characters but it didn't feel like there was too much right like it didn't feel like there was they were trying to cram a bunch of stuff in to like this 10 episode order like all the storylines related to each other mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. it didn't feel like it was too much and i had to be like wait what happened here and right. what happened who's there that guy? And, yeah who's yeah. that guy and why is he coming in like yeah it uh like i said maybe the oedipus storyline i could have done without right. and i will say um at the end of episode 10 marcus got kidnapped on anna's wedding day by people working for the Romanian drug dealers that mm-hmm. he had screwed over at the beginning. Yeah, and I was, I was done with that. Yeah, I was I, like, I know they probably have to set this up for season two, you know, but... Or just tie a thread together. Like, there was still that unknown thread. It's like, well, how is he getting away with this kind of thing? Right, totally. So I'm like, I don't... I'm done with the Romanian drug dealers. Right. Like, we, we right. don't need to revisit this. Like, this... All the episodes are right around the 50-minute mark. And the, the episode 10 was like... Uh, like 63 minutes and I'm like we probably could have saved like 10 minutes yeah. if we would have not had that last minute you know Romanian drug dealer like trying to figure out if they should kill Marcus thing yeah. so yeah and, yeah and to pile on to what you're saying about the storylines like when we first started watching the first two seasons I think I said to you at one point it's like how many people are in this show right <laughs> like I was just trying to keep track of all these characters like well, I'm, okay, I'm latching onto this character because i think that's the protagonist oh wait a minute now marcus is in here and he's he seems like he's got a heavy role Mm -hmm. like a a weighty role and and there was a lot and i think that that's actually a good thing because none of it felt like it was just it was patched in there right like you said i think that i think the oedipal thing was uh, it could i maybe it's just because i was uncomfortable with that whole story but Mm -hmm. but i could have done without that and that character being gay that i think that that was maybe enough but then we had to have the motive because of the tattoo and then we had to question Uh whether he was the killer or not so there was there was a lot of issues there with that but i i I agree that it it was it was on balance it was pretty well done now we should say that this is been receiving mixed reviews from critics. Not everybody's loving this, right? Uh-huh. And Rotten Tomatoes and, and the internet and all the the, the crowd, uh, not exactly uh, unanimous in loving it. But it was one of the most popular uh, shows on the UK Netflix for weeks or for days, I should say. It hasn't been out for weeks, um, and it's it's clear that people are liking the story. Now, mm-hmm. whether it's because it's the only way you're going to see Ibiza <laughs> right. anytime soon. You're not going on vacation this year, kids. So. Right. So it's like, well, let's watch this Ibiza thing. Why right. not? Well, Remember beaches. <laughs> right. Remember travel. <laughs> Remember cocaine. Remember sunshine. <laughs> Remember banana boats full of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, I did uh, read about the same thing uh, that you were mentioning about season two. I'm, I'm not sure... I'm not sure I need a season two of this yeah, because I, I, I didn't even uh, usually when we're doing research on these things, you that pops up and you read it and you say, oh, yeah, I could use a season two out of Border Town or whatever it happens to be. We're watching right. or Valhalla murders or whatever. But this one is like, yeah, I don't I don't need like you said, I don't need anything more. on. I don't want to spend any more time with the debaucherous right. youth of uh, the 90s. Like what right. else are they going to add there that I, I, I don't see anything there? I would I would watch a boxer follow up uh, or a, a single show mm-hmm. with just him. I was also thinking that what would be great is to create something completely new with boxer and Gina Carano. 
Oh, that would and be get the two awesome. of them doing something yeah. like like uh, like a uh, they're bounty hunters or something right. like I'm just off the top of my head like something yeah. physical and something adventurous and something mm-hmm. because and I don't know if he would the actor if uh, Nuno Lopes would do this but like the similar kind of physical appearance and everything like that right. and and Gina Carano from The Mandalorian that kind of mm-hmm. approach to uh, I think the two of them would work out really well because they're very attractive both of them and they're very uh, physical and they're very mm-hmm. personable and they have charm to them and that sort of thing so i think that would be a really if if you're listening uh pictures out there <laughs> netflix disney plus whoever happens to be Call in us. charge i need a percentage of that show because i think that that would be that would be an interesting watch for sure yeah i mean maybe if this were an anthology series and it had a completely separate cast of characters for season two or whatever but yeah i'm like i'm like you i don't i don't need season two okay. i don't I don't care enough about Axel and the kids to go back to the nineties. Like I don't care about like Zoe. Like I feel like her storyline is done. Like yeah. you know, any anybody in present day Ibiza I don't need to know about. Like you right. know, it's it's yeah. I'm, and also I'm the novelty is gone for me. It's like I didn't know anything about about, about Ibiza before we watched this show. I'd oh, never really? I'd never been there. I'd heard about mm-hmm. it as yeah. something, but uh-huh. you know, sort of like the south of France or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, right. I know it's a thing, but uh-huh. I've never been there and I don't know much about it. But now I know about Ibiza. And I don't need to go back there. Like it's, what <laughs> right. other depth am I going to learn about Ibiza in a second season that I didn't learn in the first season? Right. Whereas sort of contrast to what we were talking about with the criminal series, which we did uh-huh. a podcast earlier about, is that we were learning about the different countries every time, which I thought that was mm-hmm. very interesting. So if they take this on the road, maybe they go back to Manchester. and Because right. I've never really seen anything about Manchester, England. Mm-hmm. Not Manchester, Connecticut or Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> and uh, Or Manchester, Missouri. Right. <laughs> There's probably a Manchester at every state. There probably it's like is. Springfield, like a Springfield, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but if there was some way to do that, like, you know, Boxer goes back with Zoe and they start a family in Manchester and her daughter's there and the dad. And oh, goodness. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, and the fish out of water is is reversed, right? So yeah. Boxer's in England. And how does that work? You're like, maybe something like that. Or maybe it's a sitcom. Maybe it's a 20-minute sitcom. <laughs> right. And they're trying to meld this 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 mixed family. I don't Boxer's know. hijinks in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be killing people like he was doing in the, yeah, in that's, the uh, original there. Yeah, when when he killed those two Romanian drug lords, like that that episode Gruesome. took a dark turn Gruesome. in a hurry. I was not expecting that, and I was yeah. like, oh goodness, he just did that like it was nothing. Right. So dang. And also, that's uh, we were talking about the darkness of the characters. Like that's the under the surface. This guy's a really dark dude, mm-hmm. and we were. I think that that was done on purpose. He's like, oh, he's look at his smile. He's so charming. Mm-hmm. And then he just totally fish hooks this guy. Right. And we're like, whoa, he is, he's not to be messed with. Right. Totally. So, so yeah, I would, I would recommend this as a mm-hmm. binge watch. Um, yeah. It's, it's easy. It's, it's 10 episodes, but except for the last one, they're all under an hour. Yeah, so yeah. it didn't feel draggy. It didn't, no. you know, it, the, the, the episodes flew by. Like, I think we did the first five in one night. Like right. that's, Five hours of yeah. solid TV. I mean, I would say I think that there's probably, with any of these series, there's probably a nip and tuck here and there that you mm-hmm. could do. Um, but really, it didn't feel like they're like, oh, we need to get to an hour. Right. And they were mm-hmm. pushing to get to an hour and padding it. it. It felt pretty full. And all these series were, every episode was written by Alex Pina. So they were uh, consistent of voice. And mm-hmm. some of these series get passed along. The directors right. changed, but the but the creation and the, and the writing was the same. And it felt that way. It felt consistent. And the characters in the first episode felt like the same characters in the last episode, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. And really well done. I think it's I think it's worth your time. I think it's it's one of those and even if we're not in pandemic lockdown, I think I would recommend this too. It's not like <laughs> yeah. oh well it's the best of a bad lot. I mean, I would I would recommend it. Right. It's not like there's eight seasons of this and you've got to slog through a whole bunch and you know, it's it's one season, it's ten episodes. You can definitely do it in a weekend, which if you're listening to this when we release it, the weekend is coming up because yeah. it's Friday. So perfect timing. What else are you going to do? What, what's a weekend again? How is that different <laughs> right. from the, the weekday? Right, from every other day of the week. Right. If it's a day ending in Y, it's a weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> in our current pandemic quarantine lives. So I give this... Um, Two CDs up? No, two <laughs> lines of cocaine up? Uh, what right. What would we... Yeah, I was going to say, I'd hoover up uh, one and a half lines of cocaine for this. What? So, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> talk, talk about dark people with dark, uh, you know, sunny disposition on the surface, but dark underneath. I Darkness no, underneath. I yeah. had no idea. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're interested in more 
We have podcasts galore. We do. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Please rate and review us there if that's where you listen to us. We are also on Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, now on TuneIn, yeah. YouTube, and Google Play. If you have any ideas for what you'd like us to review in the future, please drop us a line. You can email us at cocoanddalts at gmail.com. That's all one word, and the and is spelled out cocoandalts at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at Coco and Dalts, and we are on the interwebs at cocoandalts.com. Where you have all your freshest reviews right there. What else could you want? Right. And in, in this <laughs> pandemic, all you need to do is follow Coco and Dalts. We will help you out, listener. We will. Real reviews from real people. That's us. That's us. So for another episode of the podcast, thank you very much for joining us. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalts. 